Hello, I am Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on how the wishes in Aladdin actually work. Disney's Aladdin, specifically. Dude, that's so boring. In this week's episode of Deconstruction, we examine Disney's Aladdin and tear apart the genie's wishes. <laughs> well, Aladdin and genie's wishes. So yeah, me and Ember started like thinking about it and playing around with it, and I realized while we were talking about how the genie's wishes and the rules and everything work, thanks to a review I saw of someone else's thoughts on one of those rip-offs of Disney movie companies that make movies just to rip off Disney, and he reviewed a terrible version of Aladdin, and the genie in there had unlimited wishes and almost no rules. <laughs> well, unless the plot needed the rules, then the rules came up. And that made me realize that the way the genie uses the rules in Aladdin kind of breaks because the genie kind of uses two wishes himself in a way and then Aladdin really only uses two because he didn't really wish to be saved and he didn't wish to get out of the cave of wonders I believe it was called so the genie actually broke his own rules <laughs> yes and no because we see the genie utilize his own powers under air quotes free will when he first meets Aladdin and we have the whole you've never had a friend like me song. He was utilizing his powers plenty during that, also during his examples of the rules for the wishes. So the genie is fully capable of using his power without the direction of a wish. Further noted that he can use his powers without the direction of the wish is when Aladdin tricks him into getting out of the Cave of Wonders, as you mentioned, because he never said the magic words, I wish. And then there's the whole scene where Aladdin, I believe, is drowning at the time, and he goes, man, you have to say I wish, man, otherwise I can't do this. Come on, wake up, Al, Al! <laughs> okay, I'll take that nod as a yes. <laughs> you wished for this. Which totally does not count, because Aladdin did not say I wish, and... Genie put on that entire performance in the Cave of Wonders, got them out of the Cave of Wonders without a wish, and a lot of the stuff he did to help Aladdin, you know, go into Agrabah and all his flirtations with Jasmine were not specifically, I wish to be a prince. Romantic advice does not fall under, I wish to be a prince. Changing a boo into an elephant does not fit under I wish to be a prince. And there's also the thing of, well, once everything kind of got worked out, couldn't have, like, couldn't Aladdin just hand the lamp to Jasmine and Jasmine could wish for the genie's freedom? You know, so, you know, there's also other stuff like Jasmine could have three wishes of her own and then Aladdin could use his wish to free the genie and a bunch of other stuff. And does the lamp reset when the previous owner gets it back, or do you just... Oh yeah, I remember you. You still only have one wish. Though I think that was kind of depicted in the movie, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I think it stays at three wishes. But yes, Aladdin could have handed it to Jasmine, and then she could have done her wish. You know, made Aladdin a prince again. You know, wished that her father would agree to everything. And then... They could use Final Wish to set Genie free, but then we wouldn't have the touching moment of Aladdin giving up what he wants in order to keep his promise to the Genie and set the Genie free. And there's nothing that could have kept the Genie from conjuring up Aladdin a nice set of princely clothing and a few bags of gold again, because we see the Genie use his power freely after he's free! It just, it seems like it's slightly diminished, but it still could have easily transformed Aladdin's clothing into a prince's outfit and given him money and stuff like that, since they're, you know, friends and everything. <laughs> yes, but then we wouldn't have the nice dramatic moment of, I wish for your freedom. One prince coming up. Wait, what did you say? You're free. Because that is a wonderfully touching moment. Because Aladdin is giving up what he desires in order to A, help his friend, and B, keep his promise. Both very honorable things for this guy who is essentially the Prince of Thieves. Especially based on the last of the three movies. <laughs> well, not when he's the son of the Prince of Thieves. Do you think of anything else we need to go over on this? 
well, you mostly summed it up when you were meandering on about, yeah, I was watching this review about a Disney ripoff movie. <laughs> I want to make sure we covered all the points. And... Well, we haven't talked about Jafar's wishes. Oh. Oh, uh, the best one was the last one. I wished to be an all-powerful genie for his final wish. But it wasn't actually his final wish because genie didn't grant the second wish, which was to make Jasmine fall in love with him because that's against the rules. But Jasmine played along because Jasmine is a smart woman and went, hmm, I can be a distraction. I'm actually going over the scene in my head to see if I seem to remember a, a second wish in there, not just the Jasmine fall in love with me thing. I can vaguely remember something else, but that may just be mixing up the scene and me taking his powers as an all-powerful sorcerer to transform into a giant snake as a wish. <laughs> well, I don't remember what his other wish was, but I know he had the faulty wish of wishing Jasmine to fall in love with him, and he had the third wish of turning himself into a genie. So since technically he didn't use all three of his wishes, could he have still used the other wish after he was turned into a genie. Hmm. 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 That is an interesting point there. Also, the fact that we show that the good genie, or genie, can use his powers and stuff like that. Couldn't Jafar have used some of his powers? Well, we saw Jafar using his powers as he was going about how awesome his incredible power was, but then Aladdin grabbed the lamp and banished him inside the lamp. Because that is the one rule. You can't get out of the lamp until somebody's rubbed it. And we do see Jafar use his genie powers freely in the second movie. Mm -hmm. You know, when he is creating those flying horses and saving Aladdin's life and conjuring all that treasure for Abis Mal. Hmm. Yeah, and what's really interesting is in the second movie, Jafar is more like a genie from the actual Arabian Tales because he was a bit of a trickster. Yeah, because he tricked Abbas Mal into using up two wishes. You know, he wished for the sunken treasure of something, Goramir, I think, and Jafar transported him underwater where he was going to drown and then used the second wish to save Abbas Mal's life. Oh dear, you're down to one wish. Better be careful, master. <laughs> Well, Jafar is essentially a jerk, and Genie is essentially a nice guy, so mm -hmm. he doesn't so much do the trickery. It was Aladdin that did the trickery in the first movie. <laughs> well, when you're a thief, you have to be a bit of a trickster. Even when, you know, you're one of those, oh, I'm a thief with a heart of gold so that the audience will like me. I went through all this effort to steal this bread, and then I'm giving it away to these children. Mm. Well, to sum it up, it's kind of interesting how lax their rules actually are, but how strict it is. Because Jafar couldn't actually kill anyone, because that was against the rules. But as they say, it's surprise what you can live through. <laughs> Unfortunate yet true. Ask most of our characters. <laughs> which no one knows about yet. Um, call. <laughs> most creative people have characters, I think it's safe enough to say. Mm-hmm. I was making a joke there. Mm. So any final summaries or thoughts yourself? It's amazing how good a job Disney does at you not thinking about that in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then you watch it for the 47th time. <laughs> 13th this decade. <laughs> <sighs> well, I have hoped you liked our thoughts on Disney's Aladdin and how the rules of the genie are actually a little looser than you think they are. We hope you've enjoyed this deconstruction of a treasured childhood classic, Disney's Aladdin, regarding Genie and the use of wishes. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a friendly comment below and consider subscribing to our channel. Like Lux's art and would like to see more of it? You can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep track of what's going on with this channel? You can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like Lux's art? and would like some of your own? He is currently open for commissions. Links in the description.